Hello everybody and welcome to this guided EFT tapping sequence. This EFT tapping sequence will be um, kind of like an up, I wouldn't say it's an updated version of the I am the love that I am EFT tapping that I published a year or two ago, I can't remember now. Um, but it is a continuation of, I guess, a thematic tapping sequence that I've been creating since I began sharing these. Um, the first one being uh, I am the love that I am EFT tapping sequence where we tap into the affirmation I am the love that I am and um, really kind of learning how to introduce ourselves to this concept and learning how to allow that concept to step into us and into our present moment. So I have been using this tap that particular tapping sequence quite a lot. Um, it is still my favorite one to go to. Every time I reclaim or I notice that there's a reclaimed part of me that has just awakened or just come home, um, I tend to go to that one and just to kind of help the parts of me to orient myself to um, being love, the idea of being love, and also kind of making space to acknowledge that it could also feel really weird for the parts of me that have learned that love is outside of me. So that's a really good one to start off with, um, I feel. But of course you can go about it in your own way, <laughs> whatever sequence you want to. The second part of this, uh, in this theme would be the, what was it called? It is safe for me to receive love. That's the title of that EFT tapping sequence. So that would be, I consider that to be the second one. I made it, um, <laughs> I made it in sequence uh, to be the second one of this series. And um, both of those are available publicly on my YouTube channel. I'll post a link somewhere around here, so don't worry. Uh, so that one is, um, hmm. That would be more of a tapping sequence specifically for trauma release around programs and experiences of lovelessness or heartbreak. Um, I created that one specifically for, um, specifically to have a space to hold yourself, hold the pains that you might feel around past experiences of love or even marginal be having your type of love marginalized so i created that one with queer people in mind um i was really feeling into my own and the collective's griefs around having to hide or edit the ways that we love or the choices that we make as expressions of the true love that we are just because society doesn't fully know how to embrace or accept us so that second one was a lot to do with trauma release. Um, and this third one is a little bit of a mix between the two. And that's why I didn't want to call it an upgraded version. I kind of wanted, as I was creating it, I was kind of, I had the idea that it was going to be an updated version, but it really does feel like a good uh, sequential process for this particular theme around reclaiming being the love that we are as humans and as also embodied souls and spirits having this beautiful um, and often challenging experience in this world. So this particular one that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video makes space to really um, to honor what we are asking of ourselves when we show up with the intention to be love in this world. It honors the challenges, some of the resistances that we might feel on a really subtle body level. Um, and it allows space for some of it to be released in whatever capacity that we can release it in the moment. So personally, this is the one that like gets me crying <laughs> like a baby. <laughs> but it's always good cries. It's always like I usually feel so sore after. But afterwards, after the soreness of the after the crying, I usually feel more at home in myself and more at peace in um, journeying through some of the challenges that I'm facing around how love can, when you love from a place of like true love, it changes you. It changes your world and it changes your, it changes what you're asked. It changes the ways that life asks 
that life communicates with you. That's what it is. It changes the way that life communicates with you. Um, and it does ask you for some bit big things, I feel. And it asks you to be courageous to face and go through those big things. And we need the capacity, you know, we're humans, we need the capacity, we need the support to go through these. So I created this specifically to help us resource internally for that capacity, for that courage, or even for that little moment of peace, just to keep us going and being the love that we are and being the love that we came here to be, that this world, this universe, this matrix has all been created for us to experience through. Um, so a few things that I wanted to say about the video, about the sequence, um, as in, so in my own personal EFT practice for myself, I tend to switch sides um, intuitively. So you'll see some of that happening in this video. And if you do, like, I just kind of want to invite you to just trust your own body. If let's say you're working with your right side for this EFT process, but you're feeling a bit tired, you can switch to your left side, kind of allow it to kind of go with the flow. I've been doing this for some time, so I don't even notice when I switch now <laughs> anymore. Um, I also try to try to get both sides in in one sitting because for me that has been profoundly helpful. I find that supportive. But if you feel like you need to work on one side first before tapping on the other side, please do that. There uh, is like only kind of a guideline for this um, uh, for this framework for this modality. A few more things to remind you. I do include the heart center point as an extra point in my EFT tapping sequences. Um, I've also started, because I do, I am, I'm taking into account the bilateral makeup of the body as I tap, I do also have, I have started to include two points when I'm using the underarm uh, tapping. So it's usually here or here. And I still sometimes do that depending on what my body needs in that moment. But I've also started to do this. So I just want you to see I'm tapping on the sides, the exact point, the underarm point, but both using my fingers. So it's a gentler tap for me. And I also find that it helps me to like, just remember to keep um, this part of my energy body open. Um, when I'm going through difficult times, I tend to close this up a little bit tighter so I'm trying to release some of that programming I'm trying to release some of that behavior so I'm trying to keep this these parts of my body a bit more open and relaxed you could also try um, a self hug so if you wanted to get both points but you wanted to do it in a different way and you need a little bit more comfort in the moment you could try this for that point and what else is there that I wanted to share about this oh yes Towards the end, there is a visualizing exercise while tapping. So um, that is, try to take your time with it. Um, there's a little bit of a pause for those and it is guided so you'll know when it happens. I find um, that that tr trying to kind of just like trust the, the heart to show me like what it is that it wants me to know about these visualizing exercises in the moment has been really helpful. And it has helped me to kind of recalibrate the cellular memory, especially the memories that are still kind of stuck in trauma and lovelessness, and to just kind of slowly kind of soothe those memories and allowing them to soften, open, relax, and become something new through this intention of to be love and to be loved by the love that we are. Because the gift of being able to receive our own love is quite profound. It is very powerful. It's a powerful healing resource. And yeah, that's it. And I'm going to play the sequence for you right now. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope it will serve you and support you in all the ways that you need. So thank you. Let's begin with a deep breath in and out. And we begin at the karate chop point with these statements. As a divine expression of love, I choose to deeply and unconditionally accept myself. As my own soul's expression of love, I choose to deeply and unconditionally 
honor and accept to myself. As an embodied expression of love, I choose to deeply and unconditionally love, honor, and accept myself. I am the love that I am. I am the love that I am. I am the love that I am. And there are moments or days when I'm not so sure what that means. There are experiences in this world and in my life that sometimes take me far away from this feeling. And I forget this undeniable and unshakable truth that on a soul level, I am love. And I forget that I have the ability to reorient myself to this truth whenever and wherever I am. This forgetfulness feels so intense sometimes that all I can feel is distressed, overwhelmed, or confused about what I am. It's in these moments that I forget the divinity within and around me. And I tend to feel lost when this happens. I may even start believing in old, learned thought patterns of self-defeat and negative judgments. It is so tempting sometimes to get caught up in these old patterns. Just because they feel so familiar to my body and to my cellular memory. Just because I've had to do so much to stay hypervigilant with these feelings of confusion and negativity. And that's okay. That was part of my journey and that too served its purpose for me in some way. Through those lessons, I have learned about what I don't like or don't want to be especially in relationship with myself and with my realities. And I can thank those old patterns and lessons because they made certain things abundantly clearer to me. Things I may not have had the capacity to notice before. And in this compassionate state of gratitude, I can soften and relax. I can soften and open. I can safely release these feelings of distress, overwhelm, and confusion. I can allow myself to exhale the old behavioral and thought patterns that might have been based on trauma and lovelessness. I can forgive myself for moments in which I forget that I can recalibrate myself back to love. Knowing that it's okay if I do forget, because I can always choose to remember my truth. And I fill myself up now with the intention and permission to journey onwards with the love, integrity, and gentleness that I want to experience. I am the love that I am. I am the love that I am. I am the love that I am. And it is safe for me to remember this truth whenever and wherever I am. It is okay if I sometimes get confused or forgetful because deep down I know that my sacred truth will guide me towards what is best for me, towards what is best for my healing, growth, and grounding. In so many ways, these experiences too are part of the expression of the love that I am. Because I am love, then that means even in forgetfulness and in remembrance, I am never separate from love. And I'm really excited about receiving each experience and lesson of my life through this lens. I am open and ready to getting to know myself as love with greater openness and deeper intimacy. I am ready to honor the love that I am. I am ready to honor the love that I am. I am ready to honor the love that I am. As I keep tapping now, I invite myself to remember a recent activity or event where I felt fully at home in being the love that I am. As I keep tapping now, I invite myself to remember a passion or interest that helps me fully embody 
the expression of the love that I am. As I keep tapping now, I invite myself to remember a favorite memory, object, or event from childhood that represents the pure expression of the love that I came here to be. As I keep tapping now, I invite myself to imagine what it would be like to live out my days as an embodied expression of the love that I am. I thank my body for holding the frequencies and templates of these wonderful possibilities of being love. I allow these memories and possibilities to support me in being the love that I am in each and every moment. I am the love that I am. I am the love that I am. I am the love that I am. I am a unique expression of divine love that has been asked to be experienced through this embodied and multidimensional reality. There's so much I have to explore and discover about being the love that I am. And I will do my best to stay open, receptive, and clear about how I utilize and remember this beautiful truth. That love is deeply healing, intimately challenging, and joyfully transformative. That love will change me as it changes reality in the ways that it is honored, nourished, and respected. I accept that I am here to remember, nourish, and to fully honor the love that I am. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. And so it is.